This video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, build your online presence with Squarespace. Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another sculpting video. If you're new here, I'm a sculptor and every week I make a new sculpture. And in today's video, I'm sculpting Vecna from Stranger Things season four. Now, when I tell you the second I saw the trailer for season four, I knew I had to sculpt this guy. I actually haven't watched the show yet, so don't put any spoilers in the comments, but I really wanted to bring this guy to life as soon as possible and I really hope you enjoy this process and you like what I did with them. And then before we get started with this video, be sure to check me out on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter at Ace of Clay and let's get started. All right, let's do this. I've got this cardboard box here that I'm going to cut into different pieces to assemble the display for Vecna. Now my main reference photo was this one right here where he is suspended between these two pillars. And he's got these sort of tentacle things coming off of his back and I can't really tell from the photo if the tentacles are wrapped around the pillars, but that's how I'm gonna make him because he's gotta be attached to something, right? So let's go ahead and assemble those pillars. I've got my handy glue gun here and I'm just going to assemble four little strips to create each one. And then we're going to attach them to that nice high quality cardboard base. And in the description box below, you will find all of the tools and materials that I use to create this project. And of course, along with my affiliate links, if you want to purchase anything to make it yourself. Now I'm just going to secure those pillars with another little swipe of hot glue, and we're going to start covering them in some epoxy sculpt. This is a two part clay. You mix part A with part B and it activates the clay and you can start working with it. I'm going to just add a somewhat thin layer all over the cardboard base. And when this thing is dry, it is basically gonna be like cement. It's not going anywhere. It is going to be super strong and it's going to be absolutely perfect to suspend Vecna. So I'm just adding my clay, working my way up each pillar. And unlike polymer clay, this clay does not have to be baked and it's not an air dry clay. It's actually a chemical reaction that takes place to harden the clay. Now I'm going to texture the surface with a ball of aluminum foil. This is a super easy and super effective way to create a nice stony rock texture. And this ball of aluminum foil, fun fact, is actually the first head for Pennywise on my last video, but I made it a little too big, so I had to make a smaller one. But look, it's coming in handy for this. And then after I get that texture on, I'm just gonna use my Explorer tool to add some cracks to just further the detail on this. And the reason why I didn't cover the entire thing in epoxy and then texture it is because epoxy clay has a working time of about two hours. The longer you let it sit, the more it's going to harden. So it's good to work in small sections like this. And now that that side looks pretty good, let's do the other one off camera. And there we go, we've got his pillars. I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside so that it can completely cure in about 24 hours. And now it's time to make Vecna. I've got some aluminum jewelry wire here that I'm shaping into the legs and torso. And I'm going to attach another piece of wire to create the arms with another piece of wire. And then this is a much smaller scale that I'm used to working with, but I gotta say it was very enjoyable. Now I'm gonna bulk out the torso with some aluminum foil. I'm not gonna use any Super Sculpey Ultralight just because this is such a small piece, there's really no need to take that extra step. Now, of course, we can't forget to add the neck with another piece of wire. And he's looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get all my tentacle pieces cut out. These are fairly long and I wanna have five of them. So in total, he will have 10 tentacles. And I don't know if they're really called tentacles, but I'm gonna call them that. Now to anchor the tentacles in the future, I'm adding another piece of wire tightly around his waist and there's gonna be two pieces that stick out from his back and I'll be able to tie these onto those larger tentacles when I'm ready. All right, now let's start covering everything in clay. For this project, I will be using mainly Super Sculpey Living Doll in addition to the epoxy sculpt. Now that the surface of the torso is nice and smooth, I'm gonna go in with a bunch of different tools and start giving him that awesome texture that he has. I'm using my ball stylus to shape out the pectoral muscles. And then we're gonna start adding some tiny little dots with my ball stylus here. And then we're gonna start putting some tiny little snakes of clay all over the side. 
after I do these details first because he's got all these weird sort of branchy looking tentacle pieces for lack of a better term they're all just sort of protruding from his chest Then after applying each of those little snakes, I'm going to blend in the edges with the rest of the surface. So they're just sort of little bumps sticking out of his chest. And now that all the details are on the chest, I'm going to pre-bake this when I work on the rest of his body. I don't smash everything I just did. Now let's get those legs on. Little chunky snakes of clay there and then of course trim them down to the size they need to be in the shape and then we can go ahead and add that same texture that's on his chest to these all right now while i'm working on all on his butt apparently and some details i'm going to talk about who vecna is and he's actually not an original character to stranger things he is a dungeons and dragons character he's actually been named one of the greatest villains in dungeons and dragons and according to wikipedia originally from the world of greyhawk campaign setting vecna was described as a powerful wizard who became a lich he was eventually destroyed and his left hand and left eye were the only parts of his body to survive even after he achieved godhood now isn't that interesting? I think Stranger Things depiction of him is going to be a little different. But again, no spoilers in the comments. I haven't watched it yet. All right, let's go ahead and finish up those details. That's looking pretty good. Let's finish up his other leg off camera. And just like that, it's done. <laughs> Let's go ahead and work on his arm. Now let's work on his hand and I literally just found out that his hands do not look like this. They are long and creepy and weird and I think one day I'm going to have to bust these off and make them correctly. But like I said, I didn't want to spoil anything for myself so I didn't really look at too many pictures. I didn't do too much research. I just looked at a couple pictures I found on Google and that was it and didn't really show his hands. But anyway, let's work on his tiny little head. Now Vecna's facial structure is pretty skeletal looking. It's got just a little bit of flesh. I read somewhere that the designers of him were inspired by Freddy Krueger. So hence the, you know, burns and all that that he's going to have. But um, for the most part, he's got no nose. His ears are barely there. He's got very sunken eyes and no lips. Just a little frown. An angry little frown. Let's press it in. There we go. Now let's take a quick break and talk about the sponsor. Before we get into the rest of the video, let's take a second to talk about our sponsor, Squarespace. No matter if you're a big business, small business, freelance designer, or sculptor like me, Squarespace has everything you need to showcase your brand, sell your products, and more. I've been using Squarespace for three years now, even before they started sponsoring me, and I could not be happier with my experience. Their products are so streamlined and so easy to use that managing my website, aceofclay.com, is truly effortless. Some of my favorite features include the portfolios and galleries with my line of work I have to show my work to the world and their beautiful portfolio options allow me to show it in its best light. I also recently opened my online store where I sell stickers, posters, and even original sculptures and Squarespace makes it so easy I can track my inventory, even print shipping labels, I get notifications when things sell and everything is right there in the platform. You can even sell digital downloads, they really have everything you need to start selling online. And of course at this day and age you've got to have a social media presence if you're a business and Squarespace 
allows you to seamlessly integrate your social media posts into any page of your website. So if everything I just said sounds good and you want to start your own website or online store, head on over to squarespace.com, start that free trial. And then when you're ready to open for business and go live, go to squarespace.com slash ace of clay to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain using my code ace of clay. All right, now for this guy's face, I really had to bust out my tiny tools, tools that I don't use that often in my larger sculptures. And it was fun, I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of refreshing working at this scale. I wanna say this is pretty similar to the scale that Clay Claim works at a lot, and I love his stuff, so you know, I see why he does them this size. I like it, I gotta do some more. Especially if I'm gonna be doing more dioramas like this, I need to make like smaller little people, so yeah, that's a thing. Now let's press in the ear details without making them stick out. So I'm just, you know, shaping out what I normally would without adding the clay to the head. And then add a couple more details and go from there. The rest of his head details will be added after the head is attached to his body, which I am doing right here after I shape out his neck and trim that wire. Then of course we're sticking his head on with some bacon bond and then we can finesse everything get it nice and connected and add the tentacles that come down from his head onto his shoulders. This part was fun. It kind of brought it all together for me and really made it look like the Stranger Things Vecna. go Vecna's body is done let's go ahead and bake him and then once he's baked and completely cooled down let's attach those wires for the big tentacles and like I said earlier I'm going to just wrap the these two pieces around those to secure them in place and then I fold each one over into the opposite direction so that they're somewhat secure and they're not just gonna slide out on me and then I'm going to what wrap those original little wires into some of them so they're not sticking out and then we'll get these into the right position and start hanging them from the posts. Now to attach them to the posts, he is so light that all I have to do is just wrap them around like this and then I add the clay over them and that sort of anchors them to the epoxy and everything's wonderful. So getting them nice and secure here. And I leave a couple out just sort of flailing in the air. I thought that looked kind of cool. And uh, yeah, it's all coming together. And now it's time to cover those wires in clay. I rolled out a snake of clay and I'm just pressing it onto the surface of the wire and then folding it over onto the back side. And I used Living Doll for these. I was gonna use Cos Clay, but Living Doll is pretty strong and you'll see it's actually quite flexible after it's baked. So I just stuck with Living Doll for this and it's easier to condition than the Cos Clay I have. So yeah, very nice, worked out well. Let's keep going. Now that all those tentacles are covered in clay, I'm just going to do the same thing I did when I textured the stone, and I'm just going to lightly roll that ball of clay onto the surface. And then of course add some more details with the ball stylus. And then to finish them off, I'm adding some bacon bond and roughly dabbing it onto the surface to add another texture. The bacon bond will not level out completely and it'll look nice and bumpy and weird. Thank you. 
And just like that, my diorama just needs to be painted after it's baked, of course. And I baked it in an oven that I don't put food in because I don't know if the epoxy fumes are bad for you or not. So yeah, and you see how flexible that living doll is still? Can't complain. And for this project, I will be painting it with folk art, of course. And then I'm gonna use these war paints that I got in my Jezza Mega Minis box. First time I'm gonna use paints like this on a project for YouTube and I'm really excited because using new materials makes the process more fun sometimes you know what I mean but for the main areas like I'm going to be painting everything pretty much black I'm using my folk art um, matte black for that and then I'm gonna paint the tentacles and the posts with it and this is just giving it a nice black primer coat I'm going to dry brush a bunch of different grays and purples and stuff on top of it so this just really allows the details to pop once I do that because all the nooks and crannies are going to be pitch black. Now to create some faint undertones, I'm using some red violet and just dabbing it onto different areas of the stone. This is going to look really cool underneath all the future dry brushing. Just wait. It's not going to be super noticeable, but it will peek out here and there just enough to look cool. Now I'm going to start my gray layers and I'm using a lighter gray just by mixing my titanium white, of course, with the black. And I'm just dry brushing that gently onto the surface, really making it look like stone. And I'm just going to work my way up to the lightest gray I have. And you can see here when I move the light, you can really see what I'm doing. And we're just going to keep adding lighter gray until it looks how I want it to. Now using my fancy Jezza paints, I'm going to paint the tentacles and Vecna with the primer color. And this just happens to be a color that I want him to be. So I'm not really using it as a primer, even though I technically is. Um, it's just a nice full coverage, nice medium gray color. So we're going to get that all over him and then we will be able to start washing him. Now after that layer of paint is completely dry, we're going in with a wash. And this is an actual wash that comes in a bottle. It's a brown one that was with the other paints and it worked very similarly to if you were to just water down regular acrylic paints like I normally do. It kind of gave me like painting with soy sauce, <laughs> but it is buildable and it was a pleasant experience. I really enjoyed using this. I definitely got to get some different colors. Now I'm going in with some watered down red violet, just adding some purple tones to Vecna like this. And like I said, this, this behaved just like that actual wash that I just used. And here we're going to start putting that brown wash into all the nooks and crannies on Vecna, wiping off the excess with my fingertips and then really making those details pop. Now I just want to dry brush on some lighter gray just to hit the highlights on him a little bit and kind of stop him from being muddy looking. I want him to have as much dimension as possible. I really want you to see those details that I spent so much time working on. And then just highlighting certain areas. Now using some blue, I'm adding some tiny little veins in different areas and then dabbing off the excess so they're not so intense. And this worked really well. He's covered in veins and, you know, this weird texture, weird, wet, clammy looking skin. And it was a blast painting him, not gonna lie. Now we're dry brushing some more light gray and then going in with some more blue. And then I did want to separate him a little bit from the tentacles, so I made them darker closer to his back and it sort of just ombres outward to the rest of them. And then you saw there I painted his belly button. I swear he had a belly button in one of the pictures I looked at. And 
now for the final touch i'm giving him a nice slimy coat with some of that war paint gloss varnish not gonna lie i like my americana triple thick gloss varnish better i feel like it's shinier this is a little more satin but it looks great and i'm very happy with the process now say it with me and he's done my sculpture of vecna is complete let me know what you think of it in the comments I am really happy with how this thing turned out. I like how it's sort of a little mini diorama. I understand that he's not really wrapped around these posts, but from the picture I looked at, it's kind of what it looked like and I had nowhere, I didn't really know where to put those long tentacle things, so I needed them to be supported. And I mean, I don't know, I could have done a couple different things, but I really like the addition of the environment around him. And I think he looks pretty cool. And I definitely want to do more like mini diorama things like this in the future. So let me know what you want to see me make next. <laughs> and as always, thank you so much for watching and being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check me out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Ace of Clay. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.